May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We think and we talk a lot about sacrifices during the season of Lent, so I thought it'd be worthwhile to explore this discipline from both a cultural and a Christian perspective and to consider why the act of making sacrifices is so very necessary and appropriate in the Christian life, most especially during this time and season. Now, a sacrifice can mean a number of different things. It can be a physical thing that's offered up to God, and in the history of Judeo-Christian practices, it's usually something precious, something of some real value, like crops or livestock or property or money. A physical Sacrifice can be offered as a way to atone for sins, both known and unknown, things done and left undone, and to assuage our guilt and help clear our human conscience. But a sacrifice can also often be made as a way of offering thanks and praise for some particular blessing or good fortune in life and to ask God to continue his favor upon us. This kind of blessing can be offered directly to God in church, for instance, when the collection plate makes its way around or from a more historical perspective, a blessing of grain or of wine might be presented in the temple as a sacrifice. But a sacrifice can also be offered uh, to others, usually to the poor or the needy. Think here of the 10% biblical tithe given for common causes or the idea of gleaning a field, which was the practice of landowners leaving margins of their property unharvested, giving the less fortunate access both to food and to a means of commerce. A sacrifice can also be something that's renounced, sworn off, or given up in the service of a higher belief, a higher cause, a higher good, or a higher ideal. It can be as simple as giving up something like meat or alcohol or sweets to something as complex as adherence to a strict and ordered dietary code. From a secular perspective, this is probably the most common and most comfortable form of a sacrifice in our modern life. Think about how many countless examples there are of different diets or cleanses or trendy fasts. But many people give things up, as we know, for religious purposes too. Sometimes it's even just about showing up making space in your day, coming to church on a Sunday, for instance, instead of sleeping in or sipping a latte or whatever, uh, this is without a doubt a sacrifice and a very important one at that. Another important type of sac sacrifice is when we surrender something for the sake of something else. When we sacrifice what we might consider to be a lesser good in the interest of what we would identify to be a greater good, a higher good. Think here about changing our personal habits and tendencies for the sake of a relationship or to advance in a certain field or craft. We give some things up so that we can take other things on and this could go either way. Perhaps we might consider here the spouse or the parent who gives up on the pursuit of a career in the interest of tending to his or her family or the athlete who gives up on personal leisure and recreation time to spend time focusing on conditioning and training. Think too about the soldiers who venture much in the name of liberty, freedom, and democracy. We are who we are and where we are as a nation, for instance, because of the bravery of those who are willing to let go of their own liberties in the interest of a more just, ordered society. And of course, the most radical example we could name as Christians of this kind of self-offering sacrifice is the person of Jesus, who sacrificed his power and his status before God. He came among us to dwell as one of us. He took on the form of a servant and became obedient to God's will, obedient even to the point of death. And this death, this great sacrifice, this full and perfect offering for the sins of the world, this gift of unspeakable value, this is worthy of our regular and prayerful consideration 
Two, especially as we move through this holy time and season of Lent, what does this sacrifice mean to us? And because sacrifice has always been particularly associated with the making, restoring, and nurturing of the covenant relationship between God and his people, we would do well to remember two things. First, we all stand in constant need of sacrificial intercession. We need to both give thanks and make amends. We need to acknowledge how very blessed we are and how very far we often go astray. We need to return from our sinfulness and expression of penitence and from our abundance and outpouring of praise. And second, through Christ's perfect obedience and voluntary offering of himself as an atoning sacrifice, the good news for us is that the ways in which we fail and fall short in our own sacred relationship to God and with others, it's all been forgiven through the grace and mercy of God's sacrificial act. We just have to seek his forgiveness and claim his restorative power in our lives. Which brings me finally to Lenten sacrifices. And the main thing I want to say here is that the sacrifices we make, whatever we decide to give up or take on, it must be understood as a faithful response to God's sacrifice. What we do must be done in an effort to repair whatever breaches we might have in our covenant relationship to God and in our relationships to others. And while I would never say that there's any right or wrong way to observe Lent, that there are some disciplines and sacrifices that are better than others. That's not really my style. But I would like to offer some sort of general scriptural observations about what the nature of our sacrifices might should be during this time. Paul talks at length in Romans 12 about presenting ourselves as living sacrifices before God, about letting our lives be holy and acceptable before God. And he names the different ways in which we as individual followers and as the church might do just that, might be living sacrifices. He talks about loving from the center, the very core of our being, being humble in spirit and willing to work together with others, kind and encouraging to those around us. He talks about being hopeful, patient, prayerful, hospitable, joyful, and generous. So hopefully our disciplines this Lent, whatever they might be, will direct us to be more Christ-like in these ways that Paul describes. Hopefully our sacrifices, our disciplines will help sharpen and shape these habits of life because I, for one, know I could use a little work in all of these areas, quite frankly. So Lent, for me, has come at just the right time. And finally, I was struck On Ash Wednesday, as we were reading Psalm 51 together, just before the litany of penitence, verse 18 of Psalm 51 says, The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. To me, the way I hear this passage is that God wants us to see the world as he sees it. He does not want us to turn away from the heartache and the hurt. He does not want us to turn a blind eye to the suffering and the pain. Rather, he wants for at least part of our sacrificial offering to come in the form of healing and reconciliation. If we're troubled, in other words, by what we see, by what we hear, and by what we experience, then we should find the grace and the courage to become agents of Christ's transformation. Our sacrifices should be for the benefit and the building up of the sacred bonds that all of God's people are meant to know and feel. I desire mercy, or I desire steadfast love, as one other rendering has it, not sacrifice, says Jesus to the Pharisees in his reinterpretation of the great teaching from the prophet Hosea. I desire mercy and love not sacrifice. I desire that you take note of the condition of those around you and be compelled to act with love and compassion. 
I desire that you be people of grace and forgiveness and healing and restoration. Whatever sacrifices you make this Lent, whatever you give up or take on, may it be a blessing to you. May it bring you closer to God and may it stir within you a desire to serve in his name. Christ's peace be with you all. Amen.